All right, the Portland Police Bureau just released the results of a survey they conducted with 500 registered voters in the city of Portland. The survey primarily had to do with safety and policing in the city. The results, not great. We're gonna talk about it in this video. Stay tuned to learn more. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Paul Clem, licensed broker with eXp Realty coming to you from Portland, Oregon. And in this video, we're going to talk about a study that the Portland Police Bureau conducted over last year. The results came out in December, so just about a month ago, about safety policing in the overall state of the city. Now, there are about uh, 35, 40 questions and results uh, that we'll talk about in this video, primarily the first 10 questions related to what people are thinking about living in Portland. You know, is this a place where they feel safe? Is, you know, do they feel that things are on the right track? We're going to talk about all of that. And I'll put the link to this study in the description of this video so you can click on that and go take a look at that for yourself. We're not going to talk about all of it in depth, uh, but we're going to definitely go over the highlights. And again, I mean, this really doesn't look great. This doesn't really reflect well on the city of Portland, at least as it pertains to what the respondents of this survey felt. Now, 500 people is a relatively small sample size. Keep in mind that this is a study released by the Portland Police Bureau. So the results do favor maybe what their agenda is or what they're hoping to accomplish. Now, I'm not gonna take a side, you know, that no intention of being political here or kind of saying that we need to go this direction or that direction. We make these videos to inform people moving to Portland, moving to the Portland metro area, what it's like living here, you know, kind of the state of things here. And you hear a lot of things in the news, you hear a lot of, uh, you know, you see a lot of things on the internet, read a lot of things, see a lot of headlines, you know, that really paint Portland as this really bleak, dark place to live where you're going to have to fear for your safety all the time. Now, I mean, there's truth to everything, right? So, you know, you wouldn't be seeing that, those things, you wouldn't be hearing about those things if there weren't some truth to it, but we wanna be able to offer some perspective, at least uh, about overall, again, what it's gonna be like moving here. What are you getting yourself into? You know, if you're thinking about moving to Portland, is this really going to be the best decision for you, uh, for your family, you know, for you and your partner, whatever it may be. Now, as licensed real estate professionals in the state of Oregon, Seth and I, uh, my partner uh, in business, and on this channel, you know, we have a vested interest in people relocating to Oregon, and moving to the Portland metro area. That's what we do, right? We help people buy and sell homes. But first and foremost, again, I think we really want to be able to be upfront and honest with people about what they are getting themselves into. So again, that's why we make these videos. You know, we like to get out and about as much as we can and actually show you what it looks like. We get absolutely roasted in the comments all the time. People saying that we're sugarcoating things, people saying that we're trying to make things look better than they actually are, that we're intentionally cherry picking certain places to go shoot, especially when we're, you know, in and around downtown Portland, walking around the city, people are saying that we're intentionally avoiding this or that. I can assure you, we don't have nearly enough time to prepare that much for these videos. You know, we're busy real estate professionals. We make these videos for the benefit of people relocating to the area, and hopefully they are helpful, but we're, you know, we're not putting that much thought into, oh my gosh, we can't show this, or we have to only show this. So, you know, I think making a video like this hopefully shows you what our intention is because again, the results of this study do not paint the best picture or put paint uh, Portland in the best light whatsoever. Now, where are things going? What are the solutions? I don't know. I mean, and I'm not here to offer those solutions. That's not really what we do, obviously. But when you look at this study, and we'll go through the, the first 10 questions, which are really the most relevant to somebody thinking about moving to Portland and considering moving to Portland, um, you know, again, I mean, it's 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 really all negative for the most part. Of course, if you are thinking about moving to Portland, if you want to talk more about, you know, crime and safety, policing, things like that, um, we can't really get into it too much as it pertains to specific neighborhoods. We don't want to steer people one direction or another, but we'll certainly give our perspective as locals and lifetime residents of the area. Uh, you know, and you can always give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or click the link down below in the description of the video and schedule a Zoom call with with us and we can talk more about some of your concerns but also dig into really putting together a game plan for you uh, kind of if and when you are moving to the area so let's get into it all right the first question that people answered was all things considered do you think portland is on the right track 
or the wrong track. 21% of people said right track, 60% of people said wrong track, 19% of people said not sure. So with this and what you'll find with a lot of other questions that we'll talk about, there's a fair amount of ambiguity here. So right track, wrong track, I mean, that is very, very black and white, right? So you know, that's probably going to be related to a lot of the issues that, you know, we discuss from time to time and also a lot of the issues and things that you hear about Portland. I think a lot of people, if they're asked, if, is Portland on the right track or wrong track? You know, it's gonna be, you know, what the major issues are, uh, you know, how bad are they? You know, elected officials and people in certain positions who are, you know, try, trying to be, or supposed to be working towards solutions, are they doing that? Are they, you know, being effective in their role? Uh, so that's, I, I think, probably what most people consider the context of that question to be. So right track or wrong track, again, 60% of people definitively say wrong track, only 21% of people say right track. All right, the next question that people responded to is what's the biggest issue facing Portlanders today? 43% of people said homelessness. And that's not a surprise, I think, with homelessness, you know, you can break out a lot of other issues, um, you know, related to crime, drug use in particular. Uh, so, you know, not everybody who's, you know, unhoused or doesn't, you know, have a place to live or is just in a, in a terrible situation is necessarily committing crimes or doing drugs, but those things for sure are related. I mean, there's there's no there's no doubting that, there's no denying that. So 43% of people said that homelessness in and of itself and probably the things that come along with that, right, are, you know, is, is the biggest issue facing Portland. Now, 22% said crime and public safety was the biggest issue. 20% said drug use was the biggest issue. 12% said affordable housing was the biggest issue. And 10% of people said that politicians slash government were the biggest issue. So you can see how a lot of those things are really intertwined. You know, if it's politicians and government, it's probably, you know, people are saying that their solutions or lack thereof, you know, the the job that they're doing, you know, the, these people are not, you know, the people who said, you know, the 10% that said politicians and government are the biggest issue, you know, obviously that's going to be, you know, because those people are seeing the people in those roles, the people answering those questions are seeing that those people in those roles aren't effectively addressing the homelessness, the crime, the drug use, affordable housing, etc. Now there were a handful of other things on this list that people could choose from, including uh, I don't know, other, nothing, and refuse to vote. That was all less than 1%. Uh, anywhere from 4% to 1% of people said that uh, like mental health, the environment, political division, poverty, health care, some of the major categories and biggest issues you know that people are concerned about. Uh, those were all again 1 to 4%. So crime, I mean, homelessness, crime, drug use, affordable housing, politicians, government, those are the biggest things that are on people's mind, at least in this pool of 500 people to answer these questions. Not a huge surprise here. Uh, the Oregonian uh, or OregonLive.com just came out with an article actually a couple days ago showing a study that said that Portland has the third highest homeless rate in the nation. So presumably that's on a per capita basis. Obviously there's gonna be more homeless people in California than in Oregon, but on a per capita basis. In Portland, homelessness is, uh, you know, third worst in the country. So w whatever your opinion is on the issue, whatever your opinion is on the solution, you know, if you think it's overstated that there are, you know, these issues, maybe it's not, you know, you think it's not as bad as people say, whatever it may be, in and of itself, the homelessness rate is third worst in the nation. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very real issue one way or another. Okay, this next question was the big headline question when this study came out a couple of weeks ago. This is what a lot of, you know, the online publications, local publications ran with. Uh, when it came to this study and the overall sentiment of people living in Portland. And that was, if you could afford it professionally and personally, would you consider moving away from Portland, living somewhere other than Portland? 56% of people said yes, 32% of people said no, 12% of people said not sure. So, you know, the headline was 50% of, or 56% of people in Portland would move if they could. So would move if they could, that's a little bit misleading. So, you know, the question is both professionally and personally, would you consider it? Now, I've lived in Portland my whole life, um, you know, and I've said in these videos, probably not going anywhere, you know, I'm probably gonna be here forever. Uh, that would be my preference. I love it here for a number of reasons that I would love to chat with you about. Um, but, 
you know, if you could afford it professionally and personally, would you consider it? Sure. I mean, I maybe yeah, I would consider it. I mean, all of my friends are here, my family's here. You know, I have a life here, got roots here, so you know, it it would it would take a pretty compelling reason to to need to move. Now, if that dynamic didn't exist for me personally, yeah, of course I would consider moving, you know, if the opportunity was there and if you know, the circumstance was right or called for it. So you know, a little bit misleading, I think, in terms of how some of this stuff can be actually presented. Um, still, I mean, that is telling that, again, if you, could, if you could afford it professionally and personally, would you consider leaving? I, I mean, you know, 50%, 56% of people, majority of people uh, say yes. But I think if you did that study or ask that question to people in a number of places around the country, you'll, you'll probably get a pretty high percentage, at least close to a majority of people saying that they would consider it. So, you know, you be the judge. All right, the next question, probably the most ambiguous question, still not a great result necessarily, but question number four was, which is closer to your opinion of Portland? 68% of people said Portland is losing what made it special. 21% of people said that its best days uh, are ahead of us. And 11% of people, you know, don't know uh, no, or, or no opinion. So 68% of people said that Portland is losing what, what's made it special. So that doesn't necessarily mean that Portland has lost what made it special. It also doesn't define what special means. You know, what was special about Portland five years ago, 10 years ago, 25 years ago, 50 years ago, whatever it may be, that's all going to be different. You know, cities evolve, people change, places change. Um, you know, culture changes, technology, all of that, you know, th things are obviously changing at a more and more rapid pace. Um, so, you know, I think obviously considering the nature of the survey, uh, people are probably looking at this in the context of, you know, homelessness and crime and the issues that we have. So again, no denying that. But if you look at a, 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 a study result, you know, or a survey result where 68% of people say that Portland is losing what made it special, I mean, that is really tough to pinpoint exactly what people have in mind when they're saying that. You know, of course Portland has changed. I mean, a lot of neighborhoods have been gentrified, so there is kind of an old Portland that is gone and a, and a new Portland that's been ushered in over the last couple of decades. I mean, a ton of people relocating here, a big migration from California for sure, and, and a lot of other places around the country. So, I mean, that inherently is going to change the culture a little bit and kind of the dynamic of things. And you get a, a smaller and smaller percentage of people who are uh, native to the area. I mean, that's going to change things. So, you know, lo Portland losing what made it special, you know, because there's uh, a higher rate of homelessness uh, or, or a, a larger population of homelessness. I mean, that's a, a, a huge issue. It's a terrible thing. I think we should be doing everything we can to help people as much as, as possible, you know, and, 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 and address some of the issues that are creating, uh, you know, homelessness, you know, like affordable housing was a huge concern um, that a lot of people have. And, you know, that at least is in part, you know, part of that equation. But from, from my perspective, it's, you know, it's hard to say that, you know, Portland is losing what made it special just because there's an issue or issues that are maybe getting worse or not being addressed in the right way. I mean, so much of what makes Portland great uh, you know, still exists today. And we talk about it a lot, you know, the food, uh, you know, the nature, you know, access to outdoor activities, just the natural beauty in and of itself, being a relatively small town, quiet, laid back. Uh, I mean, there, there's there's a, a ton of redeeming qualities about Portland. Uh, and, and these are things that have always made Portland great. Uh, but even like the food culture, and again, you know, the way some of the neighborhoods have changed. I mean, you know, Portland definitely looks different today than it did 10 years ago, 20 years ago plus, you know, and, and down the line. But I think that's going to be most anywhere in the country, right? So tough to evaluate that one, but it is very ambiguous. All right, the next question is, over the last few years, has crime in Portland increased, decreased, or stayed the same? 78% of people said that crime had increased. 16% of people said that crime had stayed the same. And 2% of people said that crime had decreased. So this is anecdotal. Again, this isn't uh, you know a pool of 500 people that responded to this. Uh, statistically, crime in Portland and really around the country has you know gone down over the last 40 years. Uh, but for sure, since 2020, crime has increased, violent crime and property crime. Now, what we're seeing right now, basically, is that that as that has at least plateaued a little bit. It's really tough to you know extrapolate, project out you know, what might happen in the future. I think a, a lot of what we see in terms of solutions, you know, whether it is related to policing or policy, 
you know, are going to probably inform how we might perceive the future. Um, and a lot of things are up in the air, right, as far as what those solutions are. Uh, but there is no denying that, you know, over, over the past two, three years, crime has increased a bit. It looks like maybe it's plateaued a little bit. There are some things where, you know, you see some good news, but there's a lot of resources. I'm not a statistician. statistician. Uh, see, can't even say the word, but basically, um, like everywhere else in the country, you know, crime had steadily decreased over the past three, four decades, saw a spike in the past couple of years. Who knows what the future holds, but <laughs> that's for sure at least what people's perspective in Portland is, is that crime is basically increasing. All right, and the next question relates to somebody's perspective about their own safety or the safety of their family or people they know. So basically it asks, how concerned are you or not that you or a member of your family will be, uh, become the victim of crime? 74% of people uh, said uh, either very concerned or a little bit concerned. So, you know, the net concern was 74%. 24% said not too concerned uh, or not concerned at all. And then 2% uh, of people said, you know, I don't know. Um, so, you know, basically, you know, two thirds of people said that they were either very concerned or at least somewhat concerned about their safety or the safety of others. So again, with a sample size of 500 people, everybody's perspective is a little bit different. Everybody's tolerance is a little bit different. Everybody's experience is a little bit different depending on exactly where they live, exactly who they know. You know, some people have had things happen to them and they know a lot of people who have also been a victim of, you know, violent or probably most likely statistically property crime. You know, uh, I myself, you know, have certainly had my car rummaged through, uh, you know, over the, over the years and know a lot of people who have as well. Is that something where if I go into the city, if we go out to dinner, if I'm over at a friend's house who lives kind of more like in the heart of Portland, am I concerned about my car getting broken into? Am I concerned about my own safety, you know, physically in terms of, you know, the threat of violent crime? Not really. So, you know, it's like maybe some people are more naive than others. Maybe some people are more willing to, you know, just assume the best, uh, you know, and cross your fingers. Um, it, it's really tough to say, but it is telling that 74% of people, again, basically two thirds are at least somewhat concerned, you know, about themselves or people they know becoming victim of a crime. All right, the next question is, at this time, are you satisfied or dissatisfied with the state of public safety in Portland, 11% of people said they are satisfied. 87% of people said they are dissatisfied. So that is very telling. So, you, you know, we, we have these issues. We know, you know, people are saying that there's these issues that, you know, there's concerns, very real concerns, obviously. Uh, and then also, how is it being addressed or is it being addressed from people's perspective? Only 11% of people saying, are saying, yes, it's being addressed, you know, and they're satisfied with the state of public safety. 87% of people are saying, they are unsatisfied with the state of public safety. So again, the, regardless of what the solution is, you know, that is people's perspective. 87% of people say they are dissatisfied with the state of public safety in Portland. So that's not a good look. All right, these next two questions, you, you have to keep in mind that this was a study conducted by the Portland Police Bureau. So I'm not taking a stance or a position one way or another as to what the solution is, what the what the police bureau needs, what the city needs to do. I mean, I'm happy to give anecdotes and talk about my experience uh, growing up in Portland and living in Portland, raising a family in Portland. Um, you know, I do have opinions, but there's no reason for me to inject them here. Uh, it, it, this is, again, purely for the sake of reporting, you know, in this case, what the police, Portland P Police Bureau reported in a survey they conducted of 500 people who live in Portland. And I think a lot of this is very telling. And I think a lot of this is probably reflective of how most people feel. Keep in mind with these questions, just like the ones before, there's a lot of nuance. There's some ambiguity. You dig into it more. People's opinions, you know, diverge a little bit. But the next question was basically, do you think the Portland P Police Bureau has enough police officers? Uh, needs more police officers or needs less police officers. Uh, so 71% of people said that there should be more police officers. 71% of people in Portland, you know, uh, of this 500 person uh, sample size, you know, again, relatively small, but 71% of people in that group said that Portland needs more police officers. 12% of people said that Portland probably has about the right amount. 10% of people said that we need fewer police officers. And uh, I'm sorry, 8% of people said we need fewer police officers and 10% of people said they don't know. Um, 
So again, you can you can kind of break that out a little more. I think people do have opinions about what police police officers should be doing and how they should be trained and things like that. But just overall, I mean, only eight percent of people are saying we need fewer. Uh, a, a vast majority, 71% of people are saying we need more police officers. The last question we'll talk about is, which do you think is uh, the best way to improve public safety in Portland? And it's a long one, so I'll just read it here. So add more officers on the street, strengthen police training, and incentivize officers to live in Portland. 72% uh, of, of people have that opinion. So add more uh, police officers, strengthen training, and incentivize officers to live in Portland. Uh, that, that is a thing you hear about, probably happens in a lot of places where uh, a, a lot of the officers um, in a particular town or city don't necessarily live there. You know, I think if they are living there, you know, people's perspective is that, you know, they're going to have uh, a better idea uh, for what they're doing, maybe more of a sense of community too, for example. Uh, and then the other half of that question was, reduce the number of police on the street, cut the police bureau budget, and get serious about stopping abuse of power and harassment by police officers. So hot button issue, obviously, over the past few years. This is a big thing that people talk about in relation to Portland and cities like Portland, you know, based on its political leanings. Uh, and Portland had really become a poster child for this type of movement. Uh, so, and, and I mean, for sure, I mean, there was people out in the streets, uh, you know, chanting things that were more su in support of, you know, this uh, answer, reducing the number of uh, police officers, reducing the budget, uh, getting serious about uh, stopping or addressing abuse of power and harassment uh, by police officers. So 13% of people um, said uh, that that would be the answer. 72% of people said more police, basically more training, and also police officers living in the community. 15% of people said don't know. So that is a larger percent of people saying they don't know than some of the other questions. Because, I mean, there is a lot of nuance there. Um, to some people, it's very black and white and cut and dry. Uh, some people have more opinions about more specific things as, you know, as it pertains to uh, police response, you know, to like, uh, you know, mental health, uh, crisis, you know, for example, depending on the situation, how it should be diffused, for example. So again, not taking any type of position or no reason to dig into that right now. But I, I guess the fact that, you know, Portland has been in the news, especially like 2020, 2021, you know, as this kind of defund the police um, uh, poster child. Well, you know, okay, and there's certainly people here who, who believe that at least the 13% of people who responded to the survey, 72% of people actually you know, think the opposite, at least again, when you look at it in black and white terms. Whew. Okay. All right. So those were probably the most telling questions. It does dig into a little bit more nuance. If you want to read this survey and the results, uh, again, I'll link to it in the description of the video. So you could definitely check that out. What are the demographics of the people who are actually answering these questions? You can see that in the survey results. Again, I'll link to it. So you can look into that more in depth. Uh, it breaks down race and ethnicity, income, education. Uh, but one thing I would point out is that this was almost perfectly distributed uh, between all primary quad, uh, all four primary quadrants of Portland. So, uh, so actually it was broken out to east, so like east county, north and northeast, uh, southeast, and then west. So it wasn't actually broken out by quadrant per se, but every... Uh, you know, every region, every part of the city was pretty well represented in this study. And then the other thing that I think a lot of people would be curious to know, um, at, at least, you know, in, in looking at this and evaluating what people might be thinking when they're looking at these questions and what they're answering is their, you know, their political affiliation. So 55% uh, of the respondents uh, were Democrat, 8% were Republican, 27% were not affiliated, probably more left leaning just, you know, statistically uh, by way of, you know, living where we live. Uh, and then 10% of people said other party. So, you know, 8% of people reported to be probably more right leaning, more conservative. 55% of people, you know, said they were Democrat. And then uh, again, 27%, a, a, a big number said non affiliated. So, I think that dispels another myth, at least to some degree. Again, when you look at how the media portrays Portland and the narrative that you hear about Portland as it relates to 
uh, crime and safety, but also policing um, and resources for policing, defunding the police, and all that stuff you hear about. And you know, Portland is just absolutely you know going down the drain. Yes, we have issues, as illustrated by this study. But I think this shows you that there's a majority of people uh, answering a survey like this who are, let's just say, more left-leaning. And an overwhelming majority of people are saying that we need more police, more resources for police, more training for police, etc. Uh, and you know, reporting that you know these issues are real, you know, and we need to address them. So again, I'm not making a stance uh, or taking a position necessarily, but I think it's important to illustrate, you know, what the sentiment actually is. Who actually lives in Portland? What the issues are, and what do people actually think about these issues? Now, if if these issues existed and everybody said it was all rosy, you know, there's we don't need to do anything one way or another. That would be more concerning to me. We at least have people that are concerned and that are willing to say, you know, that we recognize these issues and there's at least X, Y, Z solution, you know, that we should be plugging in that we're not currently. So I had a lot of hesitation making this video, uh, not because I'm afraid to paint Portland in a negative light because we have to talk about the real pros and cons about moving to a specific area. Uh, you know, we have to really be able to shed some context and perspective, shed some light on, you know, not just the great things, but also the bad things. And you can see, as illustrated again by this survey, that there are a lot of issues, that there's a lot of people concerned about these issues, and there's a lot of things that aren't being done that maybe a lot of people would hope uh, would start uh, being done in the future. So if you've made it this far in this video, I mean, the last point that I would like to make is that this study was for Portland specifically. Yeah, I, there's about 650,000 people in Portland proper. There's about two and a half million in the Portland metro area when you look at Portland and the surrounding suburbs. So by and large, even in suburbs that are right up against Portland, bordering Portland, where you can get downtown and into the city and do all the cool fun stuff, go to restaurants and you know, within 15 minutes, it is almost night and day versus a Beaverton, a Tiger to Milwaukee, um, you know, and, and further out, Tualatin, Happy Valley, West Lynn, Lake Oswego, Hillsborough. The further you get away from any city, the less uh, city-like, you know, issues um, or, you know, issues, you know, typical city issues you're going to have. I mean, that's going to be true in Portland as it is anywhere else in the country. Um, and most people that we work with are at least entertaining, you know, somewhere other than Portland. Um, so some people want to live in Portland, I totally get it, um, and, and that's great. You, you know, some people want to move to Portland but not necessarily live in Portland, you know, in the city or, you know, within a few miles of the city. So there are plenty of options where you can really be in the mix and be in kind of a urban area but with more of a suburban feel. There's a lot of options and there are tons of places. In fact, a majority of the Portland metro area, you know, doesn't have these types of issues. Um, you know, anywhere near the scale or, you know, level of, of the city itself. Uh, and again, these respondents are responding about Portland specifically. They're uh, respond, you know, they live in Portland. So, so I have to add that context that, you know, I mean, yes, there's issues in Portland, but the metro area as a whole does present a number of options that, you know, a lot of where a lot of these issues just, you know, really aren't on the radar. So if you're thinking about moving to Portland and if you want to talk more about this type of stuff, if you want to talk more about areas, you know, we can talk about your budget, your timeline, really put together a game plan for you. Give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or click that link down below in the description of the video. Schedule a Zoom call with us and we can talk more about your move. Now, if this video is helpful, make sure to hit the like button. That helps us out a lot. If you want to get more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. As always, we really appreciate you watching. And until next time, we'll talk to you later.